the main belief of the populist, whether they belong to the left or to the right, is that there is an opposition between the so-called people and the so-called elite. The people, they say, knows what's good for them. The elites always betray the people. By elite, I mean the politicians, but not only the media, too. And the, uh, those with a high position in the corporations, in, in big corporations. Uh, the populists believe that they do not understand what the common man wants. And that it's not because they are not able to understand. It's because they want to get as much money as possible from the people and they want to ignore the basic needs of the people. They want to betray them. So it's not an anti-Semitic discourse and many populists are not anti semites But sooner or later, when you address the issues of the so-called elites and the corrupt elite and the greed for money, those people in the elites have, you might come across some very nasty anti-Semitic beliefs, such as the Rothschild conspiracy, uh, or the Bankers conspiracy, or the Soros conspiracy, which is a very popular team among populists, not only in Eastern Europe, not only with Mr. Orban, with all, but also in Western Europe as well. So uh, many populists use anti-Semitic stereotypes, in, in, especially in the case of, of uh, George Soros, who is the number one enemy of populists today in Europe, because he is Jewish. He survived the Second World War. He survived the Holocaust. He made a tremendous amount of money. Uh, he is not only a binational, but I mean, he, he, he is from Hungary, from the United States, and so on, is a cosmopolite, as they say. So he embodies everything that the populists hate. So if he were not Jewish, I think that he would also be their enemy. But because he is Jewish, he is the top enemy. Anti-Semitism is an um, intentional um, issue in all f right extreme movements, parties, um, initiatives. And it's in the right populist parties or movements, it, it plays a role, but it's not intentional. Um, um, but it, it, it has, it, it is an issue, and I think it's more dangerous in this right populist uh, movements because um, it it comes to more people. More people they try to attract uh, people from from let's say mainstream society, and w these people wouldn't really agree with really right extremist parties. There you could find also racist anti-Semitism, which is not the case in right populist parties. There is more the what we call secondary anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism which comes out of, um, you can say, anti-Semitism because of Auschwitz, so which comes out of um, a field of guilt and a field of let's finally end these discussions, we don't want to hear anymore about the Holocaust. And so this this is something you can really find in these right populist uh, movements and parties. And some of them are very pro-Israel. You see, you might see Israel flags on Pegida demonstrations. This is a, a movement in Germany which comes out of these populist, right populist areas. It's mostly against foreigners but, and refugees, but it also tackles Jews. And, um, uh, but in, in, to a certain extent, they try to, be, to have a philo-Semite view because they, they think they, they have a cooperation partner against Muslims. 
And but the problem is of philo-Semitism is that if the Jews or the Israelis are not doing what you what you think they they should do, then it could very um, lightly switch over to anti-Semitism. 